Let's voyage across the vast darkness of space to a familiar planet. A planet where its inhabitants have a strange and mysterious history. There's a city next to the Andean Mountains on the continent of South America in modern day Peru. A city which has a story where possibly the first ever recorded beings on this planet became myth and legend to us all. A story that has been erased from our known history. We need to travel to a city called Cusco, where it's sheltered from the outside world in a peaceful location. A location that is 3,000 meters or 11,000 feet high up in elevation. There is a place called Sacsayhuaman, which has a distant and vastly connected trace of evidence that was left behind. A place where the native people that live there today still pass on their tradition from their ancestors. But we need to travel further back in time before the Spanish conquistadors arrived, and even before the Incans claimed the land. The story goes that the Incans say that they did not build this city, but their ancestors or the gods that used to live here built it. How was it possible for the ancient Incans to have been able to build such gigantic granite megalithic blocks with such precision? Mainstream archaeologists today say they used llamas with wooden pulleys and logs to lift some stones that weigh over a hundred tons. There were no horses or any larger animals at the time. Besides this, how could the ancient Incans even use copper tools to cut into granite? Looking at this structure from afar, you can try to imagine how tall it could have been and its complete shape with the amount of unique blocks that create such a marvel. I could only imagine a basic continuity from the polygonal blocks as every individual piece is different. There could have been walls of granite stacked unbelievably high into the sky. A large circular mound of giant megalithic blocks in ancient times would be the most unique sight to see on this planet. We would be able to learn so much if it still stood today, completed in its entirety. This sight shares the similarity from an ancient story, a tale from the ancient past where a lot of religious stories shared this tale in the written past. This structure located at an extremely high elevation and being built like a circular spiral structure upwards can only relate to the Tower of Babel. But how can a site in the Andes relate to a biblical site in the Middle East? The Tower of Babel was created by Nimrod, not ancient beings from South America. The true shape could have been large spiral walls with ceilings ascending upwards. It's difficult to imagine and prove what the true purpose was without seeing any other distinct details. We can only imagine the true shape and purpose from observing the base, leaving multiple perplexing questions. How large could this have been? And for what reason did it need to have nearly indestructible walls? Why did it need to be built this tall? But most importantly, who built it? For who? I received the chance to discuss the relationship between the ancient religious story to a well-known anthropologist, archaeologist, and shaman called Dr. Teo Parades. Is there um, a connection that people have made from this city and this uh, old uh, fortress of some sort um, to the, the no, not fortress of uh, uh, this, this temple to to the uh, like a biblical story of creation of man. People, there is one guy who has been planned some kind of very interesting theory. There is this kind of specialist that study the things that the Bible say, and it's called the Bible archaeology. So they say. And the first land was done, this, 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 and the place where it was sitting was here. So they go and they look, and they have been found some things like that, like the pyramids, whatever. But till now, even following the instructions of the Bible, 
they say that never were able to find where was the Babel Tower. Right, mm. the Tower of Babel has never yeah, been found. Never found. However, they are very well described, the shape, very well described, the dimensions. And this guy says that maybe this was the Babel Tower. And the Babel Tower was not what the Bible say that these people were so arrogant and they were trying to build something in order to challenge the power of God. No, the Babel Tower was the first monument that human beings as a human race of this planet has been raised high as a monument. And it says also in the Bible that from time to time people from all over the world used to go there and allow them to build part of like I am from the States I'm going to just make a couple walls here I am from France I'm going to make the steps here I am from Peru I'm going to make the bridge here so it was a monument that was growing and growing and growing done by the human beings like a pilgrimage center but nobody has been found. Mm. However, if you start to see this and follow by the dimensions and some of the descriptions, you are going to find a lot of coincidences. Mm. Now, if the 80% of every megalithic construction is found in Peru, what it tells you is that 80% of these kind of people was sitting here. They move from some to other places, but here is maybe where these people have been coming and start to develop culture. Mm -hmm. A global connection and a global idea spreading out into the world. It's true that this location has the most megalithic structures still intact, while other locations on this planet do not have the same amount of precise and advanced stonework. It seems as if the Tower of Babel was acting like a human connection globally to construct these types of megaliths to withstand certain devastation. And yet, the same perplexing question arises. A devastation from what? Or from who? While looking upon the ancient site and speculating on what this could have been, it's perplexing on what the true purpose was. Was this the main temple of the ancient builders? Were these ancient builders actual gods? The ancient Incans say that the beings who first built this place were tall and pale with red hair. They had natural elongated heads with large eyes. If these were types of humans or ancient beings from this planet, does that mean these people with this knowledge were the ancient builders that constructed these megaliths across the world? Is Saksehuma the ancient city of the gods? Or was it just one of them? Perhaps a lot of you have heard the story of Atlantis by Plato. Well, there is a line from the excerpt from Timaeus by Plato that goes, I have before remarked, in speaking of the allotments of the gods, that they distributed the whole earth into portions differing in extent and made themselves temples and sacrifices. So if Atlantis is considered a portion of land distributed to Poseidon, then whose land was the giant city-state where Sacsayhuaman is? Veracocha? Who are these gods that divided land between themselves? There are places like Sacsayhuaman on this planet where they haven't changed since antiquity. They're left residing in ruins, but they've left behind their legacy of astonishment. While looking at a map, we can see the ancient part of Cusco is shaped like a puma, and the head of the puma is the temple of Sacsayhuaman. At the top of the temple forming the eye of the puma, is the very strangest circular structure which has cardinal directions. Archaeologists do not have an explanation for what this looked like in ancient times, but they knew it was an observatory from the logical position of its cardinal location. 
From standing next to this up close, you can see the stones lined up in circles. Just the plain base of the observatory to peer into the stars at the very top of their temple, watching, or anticipating the sky above. The beauty of these stones create an enigma of wonder, a shocking sight of disbelief, and a mystery from its origin. All of these stones are crafted to fit together perfectly like a puzzle to withstand age that comes from time. We know little of these ancient builders, but accept what they left for us. Pieces of their marvel that they built that can show us a million clues, but can only tell us that almost nothing lasts forever. <laughs>